Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sonia Choquette. Today we're going to continue a conversation on the first chakra. We're going to call it the first chakra part two because there's so much important information. I just couldn't fit it all into one episode. But if you're new to the channel, I'm so excited you're here. I encourage you to watch part one. And more than that, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any parts of any conversation. And also hit the notification button so that you'll be aware of when the new conversations come in on how to live an intuitive life. Okay, so we are going to continue our conversation about the first chakra. Talked about earlier about the basic needs, about belonging, about really feeling um, attentive and being aware of what your body needs to bring the electrical system down to get centered. And today I want to talk about the attitude that will support you being very regularly grounded. And that is called self-interest. To be grounded, you have to really cultivate a very healthy, committed self. And when I talk about self, I mean the capital S self, not your ego self. You're, you're just my little self, but my spirit self. I want to be spirit self-interested. So I'm going to break this down for you because this is a very big and confusing understanding. And a lot of people I talk to say, well, that sounds so selfish. It's not selfish. In fact, they're all very different. So first let's talk about selfish. Selfish is when you are really only ego identified physically centered, ego identified, and survival is your number one and primary exclusive focus. It's my needs, my body, my food, my place, my turn, my time, my perspective, me, 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 and more me. And anyone who doesn't agree with me is my own enemy, which and whom I will attack. That's selfish. We know those kinds of people and anybody on my channel isn't one of them for sure. So selfish people are unconscious and unaware of other people's needs and unconcerned with other people's needs, even if they are told, hey, you're being selfish. They don't really care. So self-interested is not that. On the other side, we have selfless, which I suspect a great deal of you may know a whole lot about because selfless is when we are not me, 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 we go to the other extreme. It's you, 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 you. And all we find ourselves preoccupied and concerned with is the experience of feeling and sensing and being, being sucked into everyone else's comfort and need for reassurance and, and security and support. So we end up giving ourselves away always dialed into someone else's experience, affected by their moods, anxious, hyper-vigilating, over-attending, where we just get drained and lose ourselves. Like we just evaporate from the inside out and then collapse. So selfless is the root of most ungroundedness. It is why we get exhausted and we get depleted and why we get agitated and overwhelmed and rattled and saturated and drained and, and uh, on and on and on. That's selfless. So that is not ever going to help you be grounded, ever. It's not necessary and it's no fun. So we're going to go from selfish, selfless, we're going to hit the middle. That's called self-interested. Self-interested is when we recognize I am a beautiful spirit and I am in this physical body and I've come here with some intentions. I've come here to learn, to contribute, to grow, to experience life, to love, to create, to receive love, to have the human journey. But in order to do that, I have to take care of myself. I have to create choices and make choices that allow me to have the best journey possible. Now, we've often used, it's often used that your physical body is a vehicle 
like your car and it needs certain things, which I've talked about in part one, water, food, that's your gas, rest, but also we need a bit of a roadmap, like where am I going? That also is a big deal about how to be grounded, to pause and become aware of what is important to you. Really focus on what are my values? What is my identity? Who am I? How do I think of myself right now? And what do I care about? So one of the ways to get self-interested is to take a piece of paper and write down what you, how you perceive yourself. Friend, mom, teacher, poet, writer, adventurer. When I did this, I wrote down free spirit, number one helps to be grounded to know who you are. And some of the identities we carry around were given to us. They don't, they don't really want them anymore. I have a client that I spoke to just recently and she said, you know, I have all these t-shirts and little baseball caps that have like sparkly glittery um, lettering that say mom. Okay, well I have two kids and I am a mom, but that isn't only who I am. I don't want to wear that anymore. That's not my total identity. It grounds me to just be mom. So one of the ways to be self-interested is to know who you are. What self are you? What self inside that, that you know and care about that you want to nourish, nurture, and support? Writer, teacher, poet, creator, traveler, lover, comedian, creative, gardener, whatever. So get some sense of who I am. What do I care about? That's essential to grounding. What do I care about and am I paying attention to it? Because if you're spending all your time caring for everybody else, selfless, ungrounded, you're going to be miserable lost. So write down, what do I care about? What do I care about? And this is helping you get grounded. In other words, centered and focused on who you are so that you can show up and nourish and nurture and develop that you, that authentic self. Then write down your values because nothing ungrounds you more than than not knowing your values and being encouraged to do things and go against your boundaries and say yes when you mean no and no when you mean yes and and not really show up and, and really commit to what matters to you. So you have to know your identity and know your values. They go together, by the way. Your values reflect your identity and then this takes us to the third piece of self-interest, your actions. As a free spirit, which is very important to me as an identity, is that I know that I don't like to be controlled. I don't like to be dependent on others to take care of me, to pay my bills, to, and, and I need to speak up and let them know what does take care of me. I can't just hope they figure me out and, and, and treat me the way I want to be treated. I have to let them know. I have to speak up. I don't have to be aggressive. I can be very kind, and I usually am. But I can say, no, I can't go to that, that party tonight. I'm tired. Or, hey, I'd love to go to that party. Would you like to invite me? I'd love to join. You know, rather than sitting like a, a fly on the wall, you speak up. So this is very essential to the self-interested part of being grounded. And then the third part is to recognize what doesn't take care of you. What behaviors don't support that true identity. For example, say you want to be a writer. That's my identity. I want to write. I want to communicate. Well, if I'm going out every night, I'm not going to have time to write. I won't have the energy to write in the evening or in the morning. So that doesn't take care of my identity. So I can't be just wandering around agreeing to every single invitation I receive or just keep going and out and, and spending time with others all the time. If I want to be a creator, I have to show up to the time, the energy, and the focus so I can be who I am, which is the root of being grounded. 
So this is a little little kind of way to get organized around it. It's like, who am I? Self-interested. What do I value? So write down your top five or six values and behaviors that support that because that attitude of self-interest is so grounding. It's empowering. It'll really change your life for the better, honest to God. So try this and then recognize the behaviors that take you down. Like, you know, if I am someone who really loves to be connected to my spirit and the behavior that helps me do that is meditate, then I need to take the time. I can't just ignore it day after day after day. That's ungrounding for me. But if I take that five minutes every day or that 10 minutes and I just go in and be quiet, it's very grounding for me. I get connected to my spirit. I get downloads from my intuition. It's very helpful to me. And then I follow up with a good cup of coffee and a nice long walk. I'm good for the day. I'm good to go. Very grounded in who I am. So that is part two of our three parts on how to be really grounded. All my love. And again, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe. And I'll be back with part three. All my love.